I'm just shocked we didn't get a bunch more questions. That's usually what happens when we end an AMA. Up next, look at the two-player cooperative card game, The Fox in the Forest Duet. All right, The Fox in the Forest Duet was designed by Foxtrot Games and features art by Adrian Azell, Jason D. Kingsley, Rowena Peraz, and John Shoulders. It was published by Renegade Game Studios in North America in 2020. As far as I know, they're the only publisher so far. It only plays two players, and each game takes about half an hour, I'd say a little less. Again, this is usually the spot where I send you to YouTube for our unboxing video, but yet again, we don't have one. Yeah, last week I mentioned I had the Fox in the Forest on loan from Terry from Renegade Games. And while she lent me the Fox in the Forest, when she gave me that, she also gave me Duet because she wanted to have me compare the two. She wanted to see what I thought of both of them. So I picked both these up. These were all punched and ready to play when I got them. So no unboxing video, sorry. Not as much fun for those who love the act of getting a game ready, but certainly faster to get it to the table. Very true. Very true. Now, over on the blog, I break down exactly what you get. Um, I'm not going to go through every component here, but I will say you do get uh, the main thing is a deck of cards. Uh, it's 30 cards this time, numbered 1 through 10 in three different suits. These suits are doves, roses, and stars. Uh, each odd-numbered card has a special ability in it, very similar to the other game, and features fantastic-looking fairy tale-style artwork. Uh, there's also two reference cards. You get a two-sided player board, because this does involve a board, and then a whole bunch of tokens with some gems, some forest tiles, and a wooden player token that goes in the middle. Components are all great. Um, I was especially impressed by the board, because it would have been really easy for Renegade just to put in like a thin card, like a Terraforming Mars style thing to flip over. This is a, it's small, but it's a full board, like it's a normal mounted board. So I was impressed by that. How do you play this version of Fox in the Forest? All right, to start off, Duet, you place the player board between the two players. On it, you're going to place a number of gems. So this board has like a track on it, and you start in the middle of it, and you place gems at various nodes on the track. And you're going to use, uh, there's two sides of the board, one's more difficult, and the number of gems you place are going to be based on the difficulty levels. There's three difficulty levels to start. You put the orange disc, the tracking token, right in the middle to start it off. You start each round by dealing out 11 of the 30 cards to each player. That leaves eight cards in the deck. You flip over to the top card, which is your decree card, which sets the trump. The non-dealer leads, and you play through 11 tricks. Tricks here are trick-taking rules. Follow the suit, trumps, win, takes the trick. Everything you know from every trick game you ever played applies here. It's the same as Fox 4. It's the same as Euchre. Whoever wins the trick determines where that player token moves on the forest track, which is kind of neat. The distance move is based on the number of animal tracks on the cards, and each card has a different number of tracks on it from one to three. If you stop where there's a jam, you collect it. Now, the bad part is if you end up going off the end of the track, that's a mistake, and you've gotten lost, and you add that a forest token to the board which makes the track shorter and make things more difficult plus if you run out of wood tokens the forest tokens you lose the game so realistically it's a trick-taking game that you know has a a fancy mechanic for counting the tricks you've taken in a, yeah in a way but it's also how far right with right. the the footprint so if deanna takes a trick the token's going to move towards her but it's the combination of both our cards that determines how far Whereas if I take the trick, it's going to move towards me. But again, it's the combination of our cards that's going to determine how far. So it's the, if he's going to play a three and I'm going to play a three, we're going to move six. Whereas if we're on her end of the board, that's probably safe. But if we're in the middle, we're going right off the board. Right. So it's all about trying to judge not only just winning the trick, but how far you want to move. And while we'll get to why that's difficult in a little bit. Now, So just maybe I'm jumping ahead here. I, I don't know. But can you intentionally, hey, I'm going to lose this. Can I mess you over by pushing you off the track well there's no messing over because it's a cooperative game right so uh, you right. don't want to mess over anyone right this is co-op yes <laughs> this is this is a co-op game if you're Sorry. messing anyone I'm over far you're too competitive over tonight apparently yes you're, you're thinking too competitively no no this is a cooperative game you don't want to go off the track or push there's only one character token that represents both of you I guess. right so similar to the other game every odd number card has a special ability uh so for example the one is the musician that, no matter who wins the trick, you can decide which way to go. So if you do that mess up and you're like, ooh, we're moving too far, well, we can go the other way. Or another one is the fox, which lets you switch the trump for another card. Um, what's another one? The five. The five is the gazelle. And what the five does is let you ignore the tracks on one of the cards. 
Now the gazelle has a one on it. So say I'm right at the edge of the track and I want to move two and you play a three and I play my one and I'm like, oh, that's not going to work. Well, you can ignore your three and just move one. Okay. Now at the end of each round, after you've done all the tricks, you should have hopefully collected a whole bunch of gems. You're going to add a forest token to one end of the path. You get to pick which end and then you put out some new gems and there's just certain spots on the board that respawn gems. Don't ask me how that makes sense thematically, whatever. There's more gems, times come by, they grow, I don't know, whatever. If you haven't won, by the end of the third round, you lose due to running out of time. And then I also noted earlier, if you get all the wood tokens, the forest tokens played, you lose that way, you're considered lost. You win by collecting all of the gems that are out on the board, including the ones that have spawned between rounds. Now, to make this more difficult, and here's where it gets interesting, is you have to follow very strict communication rules. You can't talk about your cards, you can't ask revealing questions, and you cannot discuss strategy. So basically, you do not get to talk about the game at all. So there's no bluffing elements, there's no, it's, it's almost like medium, like you're looking at your opponent's eyes, looking at the board, hoping they have done the mental math in their hand to go, well, they know I don't have a three, and you know you have a three, so I'm hoping he plays a three so that we can move two or whatever it is. That's pretty much it. Um, I gotta say, I was impressed. Um, what was more impressive to me is Deanna liked it, and Deanna does not normally like cooperative games. So if Deanna sold in a cooperative game, I, I think you got a winner there. Uh, it takes the basic mechanics from Fox in the Forest and does something completely new with them. Like you're still taking tricks, like, and it's still only three suits, and you've got the odd numbered cards do special things, and even some of the special things are identical between the two games. Uh, but the new combination of card powers and the whole moving on the track with the central board is just brilliant. Like, it just works really well. Like, again, I, I was blown away by Fox in the Forest. Oh, wow, I have a trick-taking game that works two players. Now you turn that into co-op, and I'm just kind of like, wow. Like, the design team behind this is brilliant. It's just, it, it's still, I'm I'm still struggling. I, I've listened to the review. You know, I I know this exists, but I'm struggling with the concept uh, so I'm wondering if, if listeners are as well, the concept okay. of a trick taking co-op, I mean, nope. trick taking is competitive. That's what it is. <laughs> no, nope. it's, it's trying to figure out who is going to take it. Cause we want to move it towards me. So you want to throw that trick to me. So if you're looking at the board, you're like, there's three gems towards me and there's none behind. You're like, I know I need Mo to win. So I'm going to throw this trick to make sure he wins it. And then all of a sudden we go too far and we're way too far. It's like, oh, geez. And then you got to figure out, oh, does he want to go one back to grab those two gems? Or is it time to swing back to my end? And then there's all the card counting. Because uh, part of the way it works is the higher number cards and the lowest. The highest and the lowest cards move you the furthest. Right. So so the eight and the two are two of the cards that move. Or Sorry, no, it's the ten and the two. Both move you three spots. And this track only has, what is it? I, I'd never actually, I didn't count them. I'm only going to guess about 11 spots on it. I'd have to bring up a picture of it. And, then, and I think it's 12 spots on the on the hard side, on the easy side, and 11 on the other. So it's a lot of trying to figure out what you're, what, what, who's doing what, like what your opponent's thinking and trying to do some card counting. It, it's definitely a, a unique way to think of it. Yeah, 11, now my complaint, 11 is what I see on, on, the, on 11? the one picture. Okay. And you start basically in the middle. So once you start leaning towards one way, it's hard to go back sometimes. And you right. basically have to throw a trick to go back the other way. And like we tried a few strategies. We tried trying to like just one, two, three it and try to grab every one. And we found overall we seem to do way better by like running down one end of the path and running back the other way and then running back and then running back and then trying to pick up the ones that are left seemed to go a little better for us. But uh, there definitely are different strategies. Oh, so the B side actually has one less space. Yes. Yeah. But it also has different symbols on the spaces. It's how many gems. So ah. if you're playing on easy, you play on the A side. If you're playing on medium, you play on the B side and you're filling gems where there's squares. If you play on hard, you also fill where there's diamonds. Okay. So it's just how many gems you're trying to collect. Now, what I did not like about this game are those communication rules. Like, I get it. Like, the game wouldn't work if you could talk. Like, it, it'd just be too easy. It'd be like, well, we got to come back this way, obviously, so you have to lose this trick. Here, I played an eight. Like, it, it just wouldn't work. Like, it, it wouldn't work as a game. Like, it'd just be too simple. So, I get it. You have to restrict communication. If you, if you were allowed to talk, it just wouldn't work. But the thing is, I played two-player games with Deanna, and this is the kind of game 
we would break out on a date night, right? Whether we're at home or at a pub or at a cafe, we're going out. And like on a date night, I want to interact with my date. I want to sit and chat with my wife and have fun while playing. I don't want to sit in silence playing cards and moving little things and maybe going, oh, like that's a, even going, oh, you're giving something away where you're like, oh, you obviously didn't expect me to play that. Right. So, yes, you could talk about other things like we could be like, oh, so what you do on the weekend? Are you liking Vikings on Netflix? Should we watch the next season? Whatever. But the problem is this is a thinky game like this is a heavier game and it's rather engaging. So you can't really talk about other things, because if you're talking about other things, you're distracting the player because there's no time where you're both not playing. So, like, I get it. It's a great for a strategy game and, and I get why it works. And I got to say, it's a great mechanic, but it is not a date night game. Like it, 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 that is what bothers me about the game. Like it sounds like a duet. We're going to play together. We're going to have a great night together playing this game and beating it together, but we're not really doing it. We're doing it yeah. together in silence. It almost seems like a great game to play on a card table in front of you while you sit and watch Netflix. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so, so you're, you're not going to be talking because you're watching Netflix and you just happen to be playing a game as well. You have, but even then, you're going to get distracted and like, oh, shoot, did she play a four already or not? They're like, ah, oh, it just there's so much fo focus to it. Like, like I I don't know. This this one's not going on my two player games for gate night list, which is our most popular post. It, it doesn't belong there, but it's a great game. Like if you're into playing two player games and cooperative games and strategy games, like I have a feeling war gamers might like this, like Tex encounter trying to get in each other's brains and who's going to flank who. I think they might dig this game for the way you have to think of the way the mechanics work. What's the playtime on this? Less than half an hour. Okay. Like, like, like 20, 20 minutes to half an hour, depending on how quick you play, how much AP there is. So it could almost, I mean, as, as part of the date night thing, that's not the end of the world. If you wanted to have, you know, Hey, maybe when you're, you know, you're still both sober and, you know, have a, a, a good thinky quiet yeah. game to sort of get into a headspace and, and clear out the, the stress of the week before you, and then, you know, move on to other games where you're, you're, you are talking and, and doing things. Yeah, I could see it, but personally, I would rather play a game where like, where there's smack talk, right? Like, Oh, I got you with this one. Like you just want to be able to, it's a right. trick taking game. Like I want to be like, ha, I've got Trump, you know, right. like just that to me is that's, that's more enjoyable. It's more fun. Yeah. So you saying Fox in the forest, not duet. <laughs> basically yeah although to be fair not all couples are maybe as competitive on date night as you and d can uh, be <laughs> possibly well we looked for something co-op like so you know what like, here to compare the two right so obviously the, the big difference between the fox and the forest and the fox and forest duet is fox and forest is competitive duets cooperative like that that alone is going to make players like one version or the other like, if you're looking to decide what should, which should i buy I, if you want a cooperative game, buy Duet. If you want a competitive game, buy Fox in the Forest. That's pretty simple. What I found is that Fox in the Forest is definitely easier to, to teach, to play, to get playing, to break it out. There's less tokens. There's less bits. It, it's just it, a quicker get-it-to-the-table game. Duet's definitely more fiddly. Like, you've got a board, right? And there's difficulty levels, and you've got little chips you got to put out. Now, it's not hard to learn, but it's definitely harder than Fox in the Forest. And then there's a bit more learning curve to duet too. Like I, I don't know the board game geek ranks, but I'd have to assume duets higher. Like there's definitely more strategy required to be able to play it. There's more to think about and there's more variables in play each turn. Right. And what I found is I would say Fox in the forest duet is the more strategic, the more tactical, the better game, like the better designed game, the better gamers game, but it's just so much less social. Like because of that duet, is you're going to be played in silence trying to sync up, right? Whereas every game we play is almost silent. Whereas Fox in the Forest, we're vocal and interacting, right? And the way I think of it, and I, th this isn't to say that Duet's bad or Fox in the Forest is bad. It's Duet is the better game. It's a better design game. It's a better, more engaging game. But Fox in the Forest is more fun, right? Like, like if if your your goal is not always have fun when playing a board game, well, or like like fun in that yeah it's fun laughy kind of way versus it's challenging you mentally and it's rewarding when you win right like I, yeah. I, I I hate to say it but that's just the way I think of it I'm like duet is a better game Fox in the Forest is more fun fair now in the end I actually enjoy both I would be happy to own both uh to me each game fills a different niche 
And each niche is something I'm willing to play depending on the mood I'm in. If it's just me and my wife and we're going to have a couple drinks, want to play a card game, I'm going to grab Fox in the Forest. But if what we're craving is more of a puzzle and a challenge to overcome and work together the beat, then I would grab Duet. Of the two, I would rather have the Fox in the Forest in my, my permanent collection just because I think it's going to come up more often that I want to play that game. But I see no reason to pick one over the other. But if you definitely prefer one style of game or the other, that's those are the two choices. All right. Well, for a slightly more in-depth look at the Fox in the Forest duet, you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com, click on Reviews.